Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with my 1993 Chevy Lumina APV minivan, and we are gonna be doing a little bit of service work on this vehicle. It's a brand new one to me. So we've got some things I'd like to change and just get out of the way. Number first things first, and what this video is, is we're going to actually change the oil. So uh, this is for a 3800 Series 1 V6. Uh, probably very similar though, for a 3100 uh, or 3.1 liter V6, and probably very similar maybe for the 3.4, but I, I can't guarantee that. So uh, this is definitely for the 3.8. Uh, and let's go ahead, we'll go underneath there, we'll get our pans ready, and we'll catch some oil. So we're now down under the car. Uh, I happen to have my car up on driving blocks, but you could also use jack stands to just give yourself a little bit more height. Our nut here is approximately 14 millimeter. That's a 15, so I don't want that, I want 14. And when we're looking at it this way, it's gonna seem backwards, but you're gonna wanna do the righty tighty thing because you're actually on the other side of the bolt. So I just wanna double check my brain, yep. And hey, the person who put this in last time didn't crank it. That was great news. I've had vehicles where the first time you change your oil, they uh, it's on there tighter than anything in the world. So we'll just undo this. In theory, the oil is about Oh, a thousand kilometers, not far, but it's a 5W30. This car wants a 10W30, so we're gonna change it anyway, and I don't even know what's in there. It looks ambery anyway. Let's just get that out of there. I don't know what brand or anything, and we're just gonna replace it with a, a proper oil. Now, uh, let's get the oil filter out while this drains out. So something I neglected to mention, we'll actually park the van here and we drain the oil out of it. Before you <laughs> drain the oil, turn your wheels all the way to the left. And why we're doing that is because oil filter access, unfortunately, <laughs> is through the wheel well. Just like my Pontiac Grand Prix, see that orange thing hanging out there? That's your oil filter. We're gonna be, I think it's an equivalent to a PF52, um, AC Delco PF52. But in my case, I'm gonna be throwing in what I typically use for all my 3.8s. It'll be a, a Napa Auto Parts uh, gold filter. A 1036, which is the big style. There's a uh, 1040, which is a short guy, which might be the actual recommended filter, but I like the longer capacity on these, so that's what we're going with. Now, to get that filter out, I get one of these adapter plates that you see here. Now, these are convenient because I can just stick them on a, an old dirty ratchet, get my ratchet in there, and kind of um, get it out of there. It should fit all these filters that are displayed here, but long story short, you just look it up in whatever book they have at the department store. This one says it's a number two, super graphite oil filter wrench, and hopefully we'll get in there. It'll sneak into those dimples on the filter and we'll be able to turn it off and I'll tripod just so you can see that happen. What I'm gonna do first is take my adapter and put it on the end. I'm reaching around a brake line and another brake line. <laughs> there is a little catch pan underneath the filter, which is kind of cute. And uh, that's the filter there. It's gonna be a tight fit, no matter how you look at it. There we go. Now, I'm gonna grab another oil pan and actually place it underneath the filter, just so that all the oil that comes down off of it doesn't get on the ground. It's a far enough away from the drain plug that I'm gonna wanna stick another pan down here, just to be sure to catch it all. So I got my wrench on there, I got my, oil wrench now I'm going to throw my ratchet on there and we'll pop this filter off and hopefully it won't be a stubby because there's not a lot of space in here and there's this hose or wire loom that's right in the way that'd be typical GM for you well this thing is just barely on there my goodness that did not take much to break free I like mine a little tighter than that Okay, that's good. So here we have our stock filter, and this is the one I'm putting on there. As you can see, it gains about two inches. Uh, so we'll hopefully we've got the clearance. I haven't run across a car that hasn't had it yet, but we may have met our match. If so, we're a little hosed because I don't have a stubby guy, but. Uh, We'll get this guy crammed in there. What I'm gonna do right now is actually pre-fill it full of oil. Now this van, because it's a 
how do I say this? It's a not, not a performance vehicle. It's just a regular 3.8 liter. We're gonna go ahead and run with a typical conventional 10W30, whatever happens to be on sale and of some kind of brand. This happens to be Pennzoil. Could be Napa, could be Quaker State, doesn't really matter. So we go ahead and open up our five quarter and we're gonna fill this filter up. Now it does sit at a slight angle, but that doesn't matter. Just don't go all the way. It'll settle by the time we actually get enough time in there to get it screwed in and stuff. It'll have settled and it won't leak too bad. Uh, oops, oh man, that sucks. <laughs> Um, the other older is a Baldwin filter. I don't actually recall. I haven't dealt with that brand before, so no big deal. It's probably fine. Probably done at a garage or a quick, quick change place where they can get filters cheap and readily. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick with my Napa filter and see. It's already, <laughs> it's already really wet. Thanks. Uh, already halfway down again because it's got to soak through into the filter medium too so we'll fill this off and then we'll be good now we just got to see if we can get that thing in that tiny hole we might need to use our strap wrench to get it on there i know with my grand prix i can only use a strap wrench these filters are in there so tight that i can't get a bottom wrench on them i have to hit them from the side next thing for me is actually going to come up here and double check to make sure I knew we got the ring off that filter, but I don't know who's been here before. So let's make sure all the filters are gone. And then, then I'm going to wipe it down with just a, a paper towel, trying not to deposit any paper towel, but uh, just make sure it's nice and clean seating surface. It's not too gritty or sandy. So we can come in here with our filter. This is going to be tight. I caramba. Well, that is a tight fit. I'll bring you down here in just a second. Let me snug it up there. I wasn't entirely sure we were going to make it. Just the way the oil catch pan underneath is there. And I might still need to get the strap, although I don't know how I'd get it. There's no space, right? So maybe that's why it was loose. It was just hand tightened on. Which, you're not putting a lot of torque on these anyway, but I do like to give them a little bit of a, a snug. Trying to get my French cup on, there we go. Yeah, there is not a lot of space for anything. Barely my ratchet against the, uh, against the steering and the CV axle that's right here. It is really tight. Let's lay our peepers in here. Maybe I can bring you in even deeper than I can take a look as. So here we have our filter right there. If you can see the, the base of it right there. And then here's our oil cut. So there is space here, so that's good news, right? But uh, normally it would be two inches in further. You'd have a lot more space. It does fit though, so like there's space around it. It's just a pain to get in and a pain to get out. So if service, ease of service, like if you drive a lot and you change your oil a lot, you're going to want to maybe run with the smaller one. Since I generally only drive these enough to switch them once a year, I'll probably keep suffering with the bigger oil filter, but heads up for that. Um, you can run the bigger one, but boy, is it tight. Back to the underside. We've no doubt had plenty of time to, to dry. So we'll dry this out here. And as we're down here, we'll notice that well, we've got some oil over here on this side of the oil pan, which is telling me that rear main seal might be leaky. And we've got some oil on this side of the oil pan, which is telling me that the front seal might also be leaky. Leaking is fine, but like if we ever have to do our crank sensor or something along those lines, uh, we'll have that harmonic bouncer off and we'll go ahead and change that seal while we're at it type of deal. Kind of one of those think ahead type of scenario. So we'll go back to our 14 mil and this thing's a little stubborn. So we'll go ahead and righty tidy lefty loosey from the front of the bolt. Plus this is my left hand. Sounds like it's full of sand. Perfect. There we go. So seated and just tight, you know, just a little tight. You don't have to go home. <laughs> Just uh, once it makes contact, just a little, little snug, 
There you go. That, that should be lots. We'll take and wipe the rest of this down. We'll wipe the whole pan down, actually. Let me switch hands so it's a easier for me. Let's wipe the whole pan down so that we can tell if we get new leaks. We'll be done. So with our little mental checklist, we drain the oil out, we change the oil filter so it's sealed up, we put the drain pole back in so it's all sealed up. So now we're ready to put oil back in it. So let's go ahead and open this and see right there it says SAE 10W30. I think in your owner's manual you can put a 5W30 in here if you're going to be operating in cold temperatures, which technically we are, but it'll also run in the summertime on this oil. So let's just go ahead and put the 10W30 in it now. Whenever it hits single digit Fahrenheit, I always plug it in, so it's never super crazy cold usually. And uh, how much of this five quarts or liters? Five liters of oil are we putting in? Most of them actually. So let's go ahead and I think four and a half quarts is what we're looking at. I put the big yellow funnel here because it just makes things so much easier when you're holding a camera. <laughs> so that feels like, let's have a little thing, yeah. Okay, we may put a little bit more than four and a half liters in it, but that's fine. Once we fill up the rest of that oil filter, we'll be peachy. So I'm gonna take this out, put it in that for now, and we're gonna put our oil cap back on. And then we're gonna check our oil. So we're gonna wipe it off first, because whatever oil it's showing is probably gonna be wrong. Do the old stuff. I'm gonna wipe the whole stick down, get out of there. There you go. This could be a cool action shot if we put it like so and put it in and down. And then back out. And what are we looking at? Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're fine. Right up to the top dot, if it'll focus on it. So we're good there. We got oil in it. It's not leaking out, hopefully. Let's start it up and get it off these ramps so we'll steer our wheel straight. And then we'll come back and check it again. So let's go ahead and start it. Lights on. Um, oil pressure lamp. Doesn't have a check gauges light, that's weird. We wanna see that oil pressure come up within the first 10 seconds of running. So here we go. Oh, right out of the game. <laughs> it's a fake lamp, it's fine. <laughs> Okay, now I got the hood open, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna straighten my wheels out and try not to drop the car off the pads. So now we're easy there, Tiger. So now we're in theory straight, but let's take a look. Yep, we're good here. And we're not great there, so. It's really not going anywhere. So we'll back off a little bit of an angle get off these ramps. It's not far of a fall if we do, so here we go. Reverse, back it up a hair, come on. There she goes. Let's go pull those ramps and pull her forward. Let's take a quick peek underneath, make sure we're not blowing oil everywhere. At the moment, nothing seems to be dripping, so that's a good check. Turn it off and let's check the oil one more time. Make sure we are where we need to be. Take our stick out, wipe it down, put it back in. Wonder what's coming off the exhaust manifold. Come back out. And for camera purposes, yeah, we're still there. We're one dot down from full. So oil change complete. If you have any questions on it, like why is it smoking so bad right now? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> Guessing we dripped a little bit of something. Yeah, look at that. There's some oil here that I got on there. So anyway, uh, if you have any comments, like uh, thanks for the tips or uh, you did that wrong, let me know. And subscribe to my channel, Turbo231, for more exciting maintenance adventures. We got a lot with this van. Holy crap, do we. I usually don't have my engine bases dirty either. And I live on the gravel, so that's saying a little bit with you. Um, Subscribe to my channel, Turbo 231, and you guys have a good day. I don't really... The card guy is going to drop the cards in, and the card guy, if you follow all my videos, is me. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing... Uh, next up for this guy, we're going to actually...
drain the power steering pump and refill it and drain the power brake assembly, not the assembly, just the tank. 